welcome to part 12 of the Enterprise uh, refit build up. Made a bit of progress on the kit now. We've got the uh, antimatter matter storage containment um, resized. It was a little bit too big actually, to be fair. So I had to cut 7mm um, off the, uh, the size of that. So that's been redone. Uh, looking good. I've also uh, made a template for the first platform for it to sit on as well. Um, so the first platform will kind of sit on the top like so. I just need to work out exactly how that's going to, or sorry, exactly where that's going to go on there. And then I can just build up the warp core uh, on that when it comes in. I've also managed to uh, finish off sanding that bit there. We've got the putty in now. Um, so that's nice and straight and even. So that's looking really, really good. And on the shuttle bay uh, landing deck, we've now got all of the paint on there as well now. So that's really good. So all I need to do with this now is just take off uh, the masks that are on there. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to quickly show you kind of how easy this is. Um, if you remember, we've got the couple of bits of masks uh, that are hanging off the edge there. So I'm just going to start with the middle one and just grab hold of that. And I'm just going to um, gently pull that back like so. And as you can see, that is really, really simple to do. And it does leave a nice clean line straight down the center of the uh, of the landing bay there so that's really good and then if we just pull the second one on the right hand side that's it we've got that and then we can pull this one up and again just do it I, I would recommend doing this reasonably slowly I wouldn't go hell bent for uh, for leather doing this um, and then this is a little bit tricky because it this is the one that does start to go around the corners and then every now and again it's best just to sort of stop with this tape and actually then grab it towards the, uh, the front edge of it there but as you can see this tape does actually peel off quite nicely it doesn't leave any sticky residue um, and it doesn't actually damage the paint that's underneath it either so it's a really really good effect that you get with this we've obviously got a little bit of paint um, sort of bleed at the edge the leading edge there but that's not so much of a problem and then this one here is sort of like the the, the trickiest one because what we don't want to do now is scratch our nice little paint job that we've done so you just really want to keep the tweezers on the edge of the mask and just try and put it back on the mask itself and that's it we've got that there and then again you just gently pull the mask back And there you go. So now we've got the uh, the landing bay with the uh, the yellow stripes on it. Um, obviously, as I say, they're not going to be lit up. Um, so, but that's not a problem. We're going to have the the runway lights in, and as you can see there, uh, we've got them in place. And if I get my torch and just shine that through, you'll be able to see exactly where they are there. So all I need to now do with uh, this is just clear coat it a couple of times with uh, a gloss clear coat and then once I've done that I'll then just give it a quick uh, sand down with uh, about 3000 grit sandpaper just to make sure that it's really even. Then I'll be able to put the decals on this that I need to. And once the decals are on I'll then be able to go over it again with another couple of coats of uh, clear coat and then let those uh, seal in and once they're sealed in I'll then be able to uh, or sorry once those coats are dried I'll then be able to go in at the back and start putting in the um, uh, the sequential landing bay lights 
So that's that nearly done. Um, and then that will kind of nice and neatly sit on the top there once that's done. Just still need to chop off that little bit there, but I can I'll do that bit before um, I respray. Well, that's kind of where I am at the moment. I uh, just thought I'd give you uh, a quick look at where we are and show you how easy those uh, masks are to take off once you've applied them. So as soon as I've got some more work done to this uh, wee beastie, I will come back to you. Whilst I'm waiting for all my uh, supplies to come in for uh, the warp core, uh, sorry, not the warp core, well, yeah, the warp core, really, I guess, uh, and the... Uh, matter antimatter storage containment system I think which I'm just going to start calling the fuel cell because it's going to be easier um, so I'm waiting for all of the uh, the little bits in for, for the fuel cell and also the um, rods etc to do the uh, the warp core itself um, I didn't purposely buy those until I kind of knew what I wanted so I've ordered those waiting for those to come in so I can't really progress that any further now I've got to the stage with the shuttle bay that uh, everything's sort of like uh, waiting to dry at the moment on that because I've just re gone over the bits and pieces that I needed to. Um, I've kind of really got nothing to do uh, on the scratch build side for, for those two areas. So I thought I'd start making um, a little bit of uh, a little bit of headway on the sort of torpedo room area. Um, I've got the floor sorted out as you can see there uh, that's all done I made a, a, a little paper template first to get that exact shape in there I've taken that back a little bit further than I actually needed to really um, because I wanted some light for those windows plus the fact we've I kind of stopped it short there because we've got the the floodlights that go in there for the neck area um, but that's in, that's actually quite a tight fit actually, so I've got that in quite good. The other thing that I've been working on is, <coughs> I'll bring up a picture so you can see what I'm uh, sort of talking about as well, so it, hopefully it should be up on the screen about now-ish. Um, but we've also got in there, uh, hopefully you can see that there, a little bulkhead. Uh, that at the moment is just made of paper. So all I need to really do now is just trace that through onto cardboard, uh, sorry not cardboard, onto the styrene and hopefully um, should be able to replicate that with minimal fuss and then be able to get that in there. Um, the reason why I've actually bought that right up that end is so you can't, when you go in you won't be able to see sort of right up into the neck there. Uh, this will have a blanking plate that will go over the top of it there. See my little thing's just falling out now. Uh, so I will put a little blanking plate over the top of that as well. So I just need to make a, another little template for that really so I can get that sorted out. But before we go any further with that side of it, I need to get all of the bits and pieces in on this side. Um, I'm kind of toying on this one as whether to um, have one of the little shuttles docked in this one because I know in Star Trek 2 The Wrath of Khan um, he did actually dock on one of these and come in through uh, like the torpedo room. I'm undecided at the moment as to whether I am actually on uh, this bulkhead as to whether I'm going to uh, cut a hole out for the door or not yet so we can actually see through into that area I mean even if you can I don't think you're going to see too much detail if I do do that then what I will end up doing uh, more than likely is building a little bulkhead that goes across there so uh, just after these these windows so that bulkhead would actually more than likely finish up in line with that part there um, and then I just need to try and bring in a little bit of a light source through the back end uh, for those windows. In fact, the the lights, the floodlights there will most probably generate enough light to push through. I just need to double check that. As I say, I'm not kind of too sure yet. I'm still working on all the all the fine bits on this. Uh, plus the fact we've also got all of the little tubes and bits and pieces to sort of work out inside there as well. So main goal for me really is to work out what the hell's going on at the front really is more than worrying about what's going on at the back end with detail that you're more than likely not going to see 
Um, so yeah, as soon as I've got that bit done, um, and I've got all of those bits there sorted out, I'll, I'll decide what I'm doing with the rest of it. Uh, but that's about it for the moment. I'll come back to you as soon as I've made some more progress on either of the other bits that I'm doing at the same time. Good news is we've got uh, most of my supplies in now actually for the uh, the warp core and the, the stand that this is going to sit on. So happy about that. We've got the uh, five mil uh, styrene hollow uh, tubes in. Uh, this is uh, a five mil outer diameter. Um, these are specifically for uh, the little nodules that sort of go on the ends here. So you'll have four across and then they obviously stretch all the way around to the end there. Um, now you do get five of these in a pack. Uh, they're about 30 centimeters, uh, sorry, about 25 centimeters in length. Um, so hopefully, I only need two of those. I mean, as I say, I've got five. The other two just currently sitting in my bag. Um, I've got three out just in case, but I don't think I'll need any more than two really. The, uh, the little nodules that go in on the end, um, they're going to be about three millimeters in length. Obviously these are hollow, so what I'm going to need to do, well there's two ways of doing this as far as I can see. Uh, first way really is to um, put a little bit of styrene on the outer edge there, uh, glue that on and then turn that down until it's actually sort of nice and even uh, and fits in with the tube or filling, it, filling the end up with a little bit of putty uh, and then sanding it that way. Um, personally, I think using uh, a little bit of styrene is going to be the better way to go. I think it will more than likely end up to be the quickest way to go as well, actually, to be fair. Um, so that's great therein. The other thing uh, that we've got in is the uh, acrylic rods for the uh, warp core. Um, they're actually still strapped onto a piece of uh, hardboard there. Uh, we've got the uh, five millimeter one, uh, which is hollow, as you can see there. And that's for the main warp core that runs from uh, the fuel tank all the way up uh, through to the saucer section. Uh, so that's going to be used for that. And then we've got the uh, the three mil, uh, which is a solid one. Can't get a three mil hollow one. Don't know why. Um, so I've got that bit there as well. That will hopefully. Uh, act as the the little bit that goes all the way through and up then up into the uh, pylons now because that three mil one isn't hollow when I do cut that down into the sections I'll be able to then just sort of like quickly drill those out and that'll be fine that won't be a problem I can just drill straight uh, straight down through the middle of that and that'd be okay be able to get the uh, the little SMDs in there as well. I do need to buy some more for these because we need to, once these have been cut into the sections, you've then got um, slightly larger uh, pieces uh, that need to go in as well. They'd like, I suppose, like the connectors or something, and then I can hide the, all of the SMDs in them. Um, if I remember, I'll put up a picture uh, so you can kind of see uh, roughly what where I'm coming from on that one. Um, so for these, at the moment, they're still living in the bag because um, I don't want those getting scratched. The other bits that come in is the um, uh, the perspex for the uh, the stand that the ship's going to be sitting on. Um, it is kind of going to be that way up. That will actually basically sit into the stand itself. It more than likely needs to be cut down at some stage. This is five mil. Um, I wanted it to be slightly thick if I'm to be honest. Uh, the edges aren't really smooth but that doesn't matter because I've got these square rods uh, which are at five mil thick as well um, so they will basically uh, go on there as neat as you please like so and then I can just uh, basically use some um, sort of clear glue really you know the uh, micro crystal clear or canopy glue just to stick those on there like so um, the reason why I'm using these <coughs> is so I can get the uh, the wires running down through those um, so this well basically if we can get hold of this that will kind of sit on the edge like so um, and then you have whoop, 
I mean obviously this isn't really cut to size or anything I need to do the I need to get a pin profile so I can get the exact profile of this uh, at the bottom of this the uh, the hole there um, so you have that on there and then you have that that kind of sits on either side so I can get the wires running through those so that'd be cool so I'm glad that that's come in as well um, that can be worked on as and when one of the other things I want to try and do with this is uh, I want to see if I can get a template made up to uh, basically cover the whole of this thing on one side and then I can uh, etch uh, the writing into it and light this up from the bottom uh, once that's lit up from the bottom that will just have the effect of then um, just highlighting the writing that's in there uh, so that should look pretty cool uh, as to what I'm going to put in there at the moment, I really don't know. Um, toying with several ideas at the moment. Um, it just depends on which one comes out on top, really, I guess. Uh, the other thing that I have done, not much achievement on it, really, but we have uh, finally got the uh, the wall in place uh, on the back there. I mean, that's obviously not glued in at the moment, but I think that was paper the last time um, I took you through this. So that's been done. Can't really do any more work to that for the uh, warp core assembly that goes up through there or the uh, photon torpedo tubes at the moment. Um, I won't be able to really do that until such time that the warp core is in situ as well because I need to know exactly through where through this floor that um, warp core is coming through. Um, I should, um, if I'm getting a bit stuck for other jobs to do or something, or I'm getting a bit frustrated, I will be able to sort of finish off this little room here, get this, you know, get this uh, a door put into the bulkhead there, get this finished off. I might just drill out one of these, um, one of these doors on either side. I'm not sure yet. It might be on that side actually, so you can see it. So I can sort of makes it look as if somebody's docking in through there. Um, I can have a few people milling about, get the uh, a bulkhead in at the back there, um, just big enough really, just so it goes to the kind of the bottom of this lip. Uh, because when those floodlights are in place, hopefully uh, they should have the effect of coming through, or I might uh, be able to get sort of like a, a couple of SMDs at the top there um, on the top blanking plate. Um, but as I say, I, mean, I can't really do any more with this until such time that the warp calls in situ really. Um, just waiting for the lacquer to dry also on the uh, shop bay landing floor that's had two coats of lacquer on it so I'll just need to give that a quick sand down once that's completely dried. Um, and then I'll just give it a final coat, put the decals on it and then give it another two coats of the gloss over the top of that um, so that's all set in nicely. Um, so for the moment what I'm going to do is I'm just going to work on these tubes and get those on in here. So as soon as I've got the first row in um, on my little fuel tank seesaw, um, I'll come back to you and show you. Been making some progress on the fuel tank. Um, I was going to be using this uh, hollow tube. Uh, to do the sections on this and I was going to be putting some um, other bits of styrene, glue some other bits of styrene into the end of that. Well that job really turned out to be um, a bit of a pain in the butt to be quite honest. Well I say a bit of a pain in the butt, it was a whole pain in the butt um, and it was so slow going it was unbelievable so I kind of gave that idea up for Lent um, I then went online and found some 4.8 millimeter styrene rods and I cut them up into three mil sections like so uh, and I basically used this to help me with it because um, I can't really cut freehand myself so I need that, that's a bit cheaty, but never mind. So um, I've got those um, there, that's uh, enough for two rows sitting there. Um, and I've got two rows on this part already, as you can see there. So that's looking quite good. All I need to do uh, once that's on is just quickly go over that with um, a little sanding stick really, just to make sure it's as smooth as possible. Um, so all I'm going to do, as you can see, when you do that, it kind of starts to lean over to that side. Um, 
but I'm just going to now start on that side and put two on that side and then two on that side and then another two rows on that side and so on and so on and so on until I get to the middle. Um, <clears throat> I mean, to be fair, do we need to do the whole thing? I kind of guess we don't really uh, because you're only going to see a small smidgen of this sort of thing uh, through this part here. Really, if we just kind of quickly... Um, set that up at the right the right way <laughs> tricky there you go so i mean if you look through there you're not really going to see too much at all anyway um but that's okay we 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 sort of do that anyway through the whole thing um mainly because you know at least we know that the job's done properly um so yeah making some headway on that it's a bit slow going really cutting all of these little bits up um but that's fine not really an issue um i've got the um, landing bay all sorted out as you can see there uh, that's not in uh, properly at the moment that's just kind of resting in there as you can see it's kind of really really sagged at this end in fact it's actually sagged so much it's nearly met the floor below it um, but that's okay that's not a problem because we haven't actually put any of the struts or the bracings in there um, we've still got to put some of the uh, the girder supports in that you would naturally see sort of uh, uh, along the walls. So, you know, I can kind of purposely put one right in at the end there and then maybe one in a little bit further and so on and so on. And then I can do the same on this deck as well. And I'll be able to do on the other side, um, I kind of do the first one um, because you'll be able to see that and then after that I can then just basically um, just get a little strip of styrene just to hold the whole thing up properly um, but as you can see there hopefully I mean that is looking quite glossy you can actually see the reflection coming off of the surface there um, so that's looking quite cool the thing that I need to do at the moment is I need to uh, measure up this onto the side of that because I know that there is going to be a bit of a gap on one side so I need to get the other one and just sort of chop that down a bit and then I also need to do uh, the same with this bit it's a shame I went ahead and painted it but I suddenly realized that um, because I've made the shuttle bay that much longer this particular part is going to fall short at the end so what I need to do is uh, make that a bit longer as well. So I just chop a little bit out of or I do a cut and shut on this really to be quite honest. Um, I cut this most probably uh, on one of the or just on the outside of one of these lines um, and then when I put the other piece in I can kind of cut it to, to that exact shape as well and then hopefully by the time it's all sort of glued in and then putted etc you're not really going to see I can brace it from the back because you're not going to see the bracing on the bank um, just you know for, for a bit of extra strength so <clears throat> that should be okay once I've got that bit done I'll then be able to work out where I need to put some supports um, down the sides uh, most probably on these parts here um, and at the end there for the roofs uh, to go in so the roof has got something to sit on the roof I'm actually going to make out of a stiffer uh, styrene so it's not going to sag anywhere um, but yeah, so I just need to, once I've got that bit done, um, because I just want a bit of a break from doing the shuttle bay really, so I'm going to concentrate on that. So once I've got that done, I'll go back to this and, um, get everything all measured up. So that'd be cool. Um, the other thing that I've done as well is I've got the other bulkhead in at the back there. So that's in place. Which is kind of cool, so that's in. Um, as I say, I don't, I really can't do anything else with that now. So that's just going to sit there until such time that um, everything else is done. Um, that's the way it goes on that bit, unfortunately. Um, so I'm going to carry on with this, and as soon as I've got this bit completed, I will come back to you. So I've got all my uh, little knobbly bits uh, on the fuel tank. They're not exactly uh, that even, really, to be quite honest. As you can see, there's a few there that are a little bit uh, 
a little bit taller than others they stand a little bit more proud than others but that's not really an issue because I need to sand that down anyway because the uh, the little nodules there they have got um, teeth marks in them from the saw that I was using to cut them so I'd need to sand those down anyway regardless <clears throat> to get rid of those teeth marks so by sanding that down that's going to naturally help get uh, even everything back up again as well so that's cool not a problem um, can't do that at the moment because they're still drying need to be patient and let all the glue drying cure properly um, so I would imagine it's going to be tomorrow before I start doing anything uh, with that now so in the meantime I'm going to turn my attention back to uh, the uh, cross-section shell bay um, and I need to recoat this uh, sand this down a little bit just to make sure it's all nice and even uh, and recoat the thing with some paint the other thing I need to do to this as well is just make a little notch in the back there uh, for the wires for the uh, chaser sequence lights for the landing bay um, I also need to think about putting some uh, sort of like maybe six lights or so uh, SMDs pointing downwards into here so it kind of lights up the uh, the shuttle bay uh, sorry the uh, the land the uh, the shuttle bay stowage area um, once all that bits done um, I can then put the uh, mark off on the front uh, where I need to put the wall and then I'll be able to get that put in, I'll then be able to get the side walls put in. Once the side walls are actually in place, I'll then be able to bring in to play the uh, the actual uh, shuttle bay itself, or sorry, the, uh, the landing deck, um, and work out exactly where I need to put the, uh, the walls in that. Once I've worked out where the walls are going, I can then also put the decals down on the, uh, the landing deck as well. Once that bit's done, I'll then be able to get all of this put together um, and address the the sidewalls because well, one of the things I will need to do, as you can see from there, is I just need to sort of strengthen these up. So on this side here, I could really get away with just putting uh, a, a piece of styrene in at an angle because you're never going to see that anyway, so it doesn't matter. And again, at the back, I just need to uh, most probably do the same there. On this side, I just need to put uh, what would be considered little braces in place because that that's the area that's actually going to be seen. So I just need to brace that every now and again just to make it look as though there's, there's proper braces going in there. Um, so yeah, I'm just going to make a start on this and hopefully try and get most of this uh, sort of finished over the uh, over the next video uh, as I'm gonna call this one quits I think it's getting a bit long actually um, so hopefully over the next video I'm gonna I should hopefully be able to make some pretty good progress on this because I really want to try and get this bit to bed as soon as possible really um, so that's about it for the moment uh, I'll catch up with you in the next video which is gonna be uh, the unlucky for some number um, so until then, thanks for watching and please do take care.